All right, welcome to our fourth video in Unit 5. Uh, this one's called Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure. So, yeah, let's get started. John Dalton pointed out that in a mixture of gases, each gas exerts pressure as if it were alone with no other gases mixed in it. All right, while this seems kind of straightforward, let me give you an example in people, okay? We all know that you probably sing in the shower. And if you don't, thank you. But for those of you who sing in the shower, you also probably know that most people don't want you to. It's horrible. It sounds like you're murdering a cat. Like, just, just stop. Now, when you sing in groups of people, typically you sing differently. You know, you A, don't sing, and thank you. Or B, you sing quieter. You try to listen to people better. But typically, if we sing in the shower, we agree that, you probably can agree, that you sing differently in the shower than you do when with people. Okay, or those of you who dance when no one's around, like you just kind of go crazy in your room listening to that song, and then when your friends are around, you just stand still, like man, dancing's for like stupid people. You know, you totally don't dance. Dalton's law is basically like saying that you sing the same both ways, whether you're alone or with friends, or you dance the same way, whether alone or with friends. That's what we're saying gases do. Um, it makes our life so much easier when he noticed this. Because when you deal with combined pressures, you don't have to deal with saying, oh, well, there's more of this, so the pressure, like, decreases or something. You, you really can just ignore most things, and it comes down to addition. You know, just adding two numbers together. But let's kind of get the actual definition. So, before that, the pressure of each gas in a mixture is called the partial pressure of that gas. Please highlight this term if you can. Um, I've got a few highlighters. It's just, you're going to see the phrase partial pressure a lot. And it refers to the pressure of a gas while in a mixture, okay? And the total pressure of the gas is just the sum of all the partial pressures, okay? That's, that's basically definition, okay? Partial pressure is what part of that pressure comes from this gas. And the total pressure is the sum of all the partial pressures in a mixture, okay? So we got those two terms down. You got them highlighted or circled or something, Let's go on. The principle or, that we basically mentioned is actually basically just Dalton's law of partial pressures. Okay, I know it seems really boring, but he basically said that the total pressure of gases is just the sum of all the partial pressures of, a gas, of the gases in a mixture. Now, this goes back to him saying that these partial pressures are basically the same as if, you know, they were all by themselves, but it really comes down to the total pressure is just the sum of all the individual. Now, before I go on, that A, B, and C really just mean the partial pressures of, like, gases A, B, and C. Typically, if we're talking about oxygen gas, a, that A will actually be oxygen. Or if we're talking about carbon dioxide, B will be CO2. So those A, B, and C represent different gases in a mixture. And again, add them all together, and you get your total pressure. So... Let me give you an example. As usual, I'll let you practice it, but let me read it. So a mixture of gases exerts a total pressure of 1.72 atm. Remember, that's atmospheres. That's our most common pressure unit. But this mixture is composed of oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen gas. Well, we know that in this mixture, our oxygen gas exerts a pressure of 0.5 atm. Our hydrogen gas exerts a pressure of 0.24 atm. And I'm saying, what is our pressure of nitrogen in that mixture? So take a few minutes, um, pause, try and solve this, and come back in a bit. <clears throat> so now that you guys have worked a bit, um, let me remind you of Dalton's Law. Here's our total pressure. So let's just start filling our numbers. Our total is 1.72. Our pressure of oxygen is 0 0.5 atm. By the way, that is right there and there. Our pressure of hydrogen is 0 0.24 atm. That is, again, right there. Oh, that's not a highlighter. There. And we're looking for our pressure of N2, which means our pressure of N2 is going to be this plus this. Add that together and then subtract it from here, which gets... 0 0.98 atm pressure for a pressure of n2 again remember the pn2 says this is the partial pressure of n2 
and N2 is just how nitrogen gas its formula. So there you go. That's the first step of Dalton's Law. Yay. All right. So a common way to determine that pressure of a gas is actually to collect it over water. So this is a weird concept. Let me try and show you a picture. Long story short, you've got basically a bucket, and we'll say that's filled with water. You know what? Hey, hang on. Yeah, water. It's blue and stuff. For the record, yes, I did get an A in high school art my senior year. I just didn't use it well, but ha, I can actually draw stuff. Okay, and then basically you put what's called a gas collection tube. Okay, and then typically you've got some reaction thing going in here. And basically what happens is our pressure is going to be measured up here. It's actually based on how high the volume is, how much air you've got, etc. But what happens is that some of this pressure in here is actually coming also from the water. So if I were to, you know, draw that thing in a kind of side looking glance, most of this, most of this pressure is going to be the gas that we're looking at. However, some of that pressure is going to be our water. So it basically, if our total, it goes back to Dalton's law. If our total pressure is whatever, just subtract out, you know, the pressure of the water to get what we call our dry gas. But I just want to show you really what it's talking about by over water, because we're literally collecting gas over water. So in order to determine the temperature of the dry gas, which is, you know, back in that example where we've got all our gas and then water, the pressure of the dry gas is basically the pressure of, in this case, the yellow without the blue. So all we do is subtract the vapor pressure of water at that temperature from the total pressure. Cool thing about water is that it actually has the same pressure based on its temperature. And they'll typically tell you that. If not, I've got a chart you can use. But they'll normally tell you, we're collecting it at 25 degrees Celsius and the vapor pressure of water is 23.8 torr or something. So, and then you subtract that from the total. Just, again, wouldn't hurt to highlight this phrase, dry gas. That refers to, in this case, the yellow without the blue, which is our gas without the vapor pressure. All right, so here's an example. Again, you got that phrase, collecting over water. I'll give you a few minutes to try it, but as I've been doing, let me read it. A 250 ml sample of oxygen is collected over water at 25 degrees Celsius and 760 torr pressure. What is the pressure of the dry gas alone? Now, our vapor pressure of that water at 25 degrees Celsius is 23.8 torr. So what this is saying is that we collected it over water, and basically our total pressure came to 760 torr. So with that, spend a few minutes. Try to tell me basically the pressure of just the oxygen without the vapor pressure. Come back in a bit. All right. Welcome back. So hopefully you remember that collecting over water basically says that we have mostly oxygen and a little bit of water. And they're asking for the pressure of just that dry gas. Now, I know they told you 250 ml sample, but that really doesn't matter. They're just telling you how much water you collected. What we care about is that our total pressure, that's supposed to be an O, is our pressure of our oxygen plus basically the pressure of the little bit of water. And our total is 760 torr. We're looking for our vapor pressure of water. Sorry, our... Um, partial pressure of water, and our vapor pressure, uh, wow, we're looking for the partial pressure of oxygen, but the vapor pressure of water is 23.8 torr. So all we do is take 760, subtract from that 23.8, and we get that our partial pressure of oxygen is 736.2. So there you go. That's how you find the vapor, the pressure of a dry gas. Um, yeah, not too bad. Comes back to Dalton's Law. That's kind of why it's in the Dalton's Law section, but all right. So last part of Dalton's Law. Dalton noticed that if a gas comprises a certain percentage of the moles in a mixture of gases, then it will comprise the same percentage of the pressure in the mixture. Okay, let me put this kind of in a little different phrase. If something covers 
if half of a substance, half of a mixture is oxygen, then half of the pressure should be from oxygen. So if two-thirds of a mixture is oxygen, then two-thirds of the pressure should be from oxygen. My hope is you're thinking, duh, someone actually had to write that. But that's basically what Dalton's saying, is that if it comprises the same percentage of moles, which again refer to the amount of gas, so if it covers a certain percentage of the amount, then it will comprise that same percentage of the pressure. Okay? So typically we use this equation where we have moles of X referring to really whatever gas we're talking about over our moles total. That'll get us our percentage of the moles or percentage of our amount times our total pressure will get the pressure of that gas. So I know that looks all fractions and stuff, but let me kind of define some of these. Px represents the partial pressure of gas X. Moles X over moles total is called a mole fraction of gas X. It's just a fraction of the moles. And then P total is our total pressure of the mixture. So again, this says that our partial pressure of a gas is equal to whatever fraction of moles that gas has times our total pressure. So if it turns out that it covers 50% of our moles, then it's going to end up being 50% of our total pressure. If it's 40% of our moles, it's going to be 40% of our total pressure. That's really all we're saying. It just, you know, looks like fractions. All right. So I know this example is not quite in the order, at least according to the notes I had. If this is the order your notes have, awesome, because I want to do this one first. So a mixture of two moles of helium gas, three moles of hydrogen gas, and nine moles of oxygen gas all exert a total pressure of 200 kilopascal. What is the partial pressure of each gas? Okay, go back to those mole fractions, and I'm going to give you a few minutes to work on this. However, you can keep it in KPA. So just, just letting you know, you don't have to convert it to ATM. But spend a few minutes, work on this, um, and then come back. All right, so welcome back. What we need to do is first find the mole fraction of each gas, and then we're going to take that mole fraction times by our total pressure. So we have basically 2 plus 3 plus 9 moles of various gases, which is 14. That says that our partial pressure of helium, which has 2 moles, wow, well, sorry, is going to be 2 over 14, where 2 being how much helium and 14 being our total. And we're going to times that by 200 kilopascal, which is our total pressure. Okay. Partial pressure of oxygen, which has uh, 9 moles. I don't know why I did oxygen next. But will be 9 over 14 times 200. And our partial pressure of hydrogen which is 3 moles of hydrogen, will be 3 over 14 times 200. So basically we're saying, all right, this covers 2 fourteenths of the moles, so it's going to be 2 fourteenths of our total pressure. 9 fourteenths and 9 fourteenths of total pressure, 3 fourteenths and 3 fourteenths. By the way, all these pressures that we're about to get should all end up to 200, okay? Because 2 plus 9 plus 3 equals 14, which means we're covering all our pressure. So take a bit, plug that in your calculator, come back, and I'll have these answers. All right, so welcome back. Here are our partial pressures. If you want to add them all up, you can. They'll get you about 200 or at least like 199.9 or 200.2 or something. But either way, I just took 2 over 14 times it by 200. 9 over 14 times it by 200. 3 over 14 times it by 200. There you go. Those are partial pressures. All right, so welcome to our last example, which, again, in your notes, may be the first. Please note that um, I did add this in, <clears throat> this phrase on here. You're going to want to actually put that in. But a mixture contains hydrogen gas and helium gas at 3 atm. Okay, if our partial pressure of helium gas is 1.2 atm, how many grams of hydrogen are in the mixture? Now, this is probably the hardest problem you'll see, but I think you guys can do this. So let me give you a kind of step-by-step -step process on how to do it but then I'm going to have you practice it before I really show you what to do with it. So first, 
if we're looking for grams of hydrogen, we're going to probably come from our moles of hydrogen, okay? Which means ultimately we're going to find grams, but before that we need to find moles. Now, Dalton's law basically says that the same percentage a gas occupies of moles, it'll cover of pressure. Meaning if it covers 50% of the moles, it'll cover 50% of the pressure. Or vice versa. If it covers 60% of the pressure, it will also cover 60% of the moles. So we know our, partial, our total pressure, and we know our partial pressure of helium. From there, we can get our partial pressure of hydrogen. So I'm going to say our first one is find our partial pressure of hydrogen. Once we have our partial pressure of hydrogen, we can find our, um, what we call ultimately our mole fraction of hydrogen, but you can kind of find your um, pressure fraction of hydrogen. So we can find that. Okay. Now we know that that is equal to the same fraction of our moles. So then we can find our moles of hydrogen because we know our total moles. We just found our fraction of that, and we can figure out our moles of hydrogen. And then we can find grams of hydrogen. So try this for a bit. Um, good luck. I know it's a bit difficult. It's got a few steps, but you guys can totally do this. Come back in a few minutes. All right. So here's basically all my work. Let me kind of walk you through it. Partial pressure of hydrogen. I took our total pressure, which is 3 atm, and I subtracted from that our partial pressure of helium because I just want to find hydrogen. That got me my partial pressure of H2. I then took that and divided it by my total pressure of gases, which again is 3, and got 0.6. That basically says that um, our hydrogen is accounting for about 60% of the pressure, which means it should account for 60% of the moles. So my next question was, well, what is 60% of our moles? Okay, our total moles are 7. This is not on your paper. I told you guys to write that down. So I took 0.6 and times it by 0.7 to figure out, hey, I got 4.2 moles of hydrogen. Finally, I took those and went to grams. Okay, times my molar mass. Remember, it's 2.02 because it's H2. Got to 8.5 grams. Now, like I said, long problem. If you got it right, awesome. If not, hopefully you at least see how you could have gotten it. Um, but there you go. That finishes our video on Dalton's Law. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.